It always feels good when you see someone doing something completely horrendous and finally manages to reap the consequences that they so deserved. Whether it be another addition to an instant karma compilation or it takes years and years for justice to finally prevail. This time around, we're going to be talking about the latter, more specifically an incident that happened back in 2019. And it has taken Japan five years to finally figure out what this person did and how we are going to punish them. And I'm just going to say right here and right now, if you know about this story, then you're going to be very happy to see this video because I sure was. So for those of you who weren't around on the internet or maybe have no idea what happened back in 2019, then there was an absolutely horrendous attack that befell upon one of the most beloved anime studios in all of Japan, Kyoto Animation. Essentially, it was an arson attack committed by one Japanese man, Alba Shinji, who set fire to the Kyoto Animation headquarters in, obviously, Kyoto, as the name suggests, and ended up killing 36 people in the process. 36 extremely talented, hardworking, dedicated animators and anime staff that have brought to the world some of the most beautiful, memorable, extravagant anime series ever created. If you recognize even one of these shows, you love them or you just know of it, then you'll know just how much of an amazing track record this particular anime production had. I mean, it is one of my favorite anime productions out there. One of my favorite studios out there uh, has created some of my favorite anime series ever made. And so back in 2019, when I heard about this incident, I was obviously livid. I, I, I don't think you don't even need to be a fan of anime to know that this situation is one of the most horrendous attacks that has been committed on Japanese soil. But justice has finally been served because Alba Shinji, the man responsible for killing 36 people at Kyoto Animation headquarters in 2019, has just yesterday got the death sentence. According, Japan has sentenced to death a man convicted of murdering 36 people in an arson attack on an animation studio in 2019. The attack on Kyoto Animation, better known as KyoAni, sent shockwaves through Japan, where violent crime is rare and stunned fans of the studio's output around the world. Shinji Alba, now 45, broke into the firm's building in Kyoto, doused the entrance area with petrol, and set it alight. He then shouted, drop dead, according to accounts, by survivors of Japan's deadliest crime in decades. Many of the victims were young people. And not only were they young people, but they were, again, animators, directors, producers, just staff that was working there that did absolutely nothing wrong. Like these people were just innocent anime creators now, we're just trying to create some of, again, the most beautiful anime in the past decade or so, uh, and has a very extensive history in the anime community too. Like, the, these guys are a long-standing studio that have been making stuff since, like, the 90s. So, to see this happen, uh, you know, firsthand, or, or, you know, the first accounts when I heard about it uh, on Japanese TV, actually, or not even on, like, online news. When I saw it on Japanese TV, I was fucking devastated to say the least. The attack also injured 32 others and left Alba with serious burns that required almost a year of treatment. He faced five charges, including murder, attempted murder, and arson. His lawyers had entered a plea of not guilty, contending that their client had been suffering a mental disorder at the time of the crime that prevented him from distinguishing between good and bad. I've always found it interesting with all of these, like, mass murderer uh, lawyers, like, how do they, like, even start to construct some some kind of argument to make it so that someone who is clearly insane, not in the clinical sense, but just like in the men, like just in what they did uh, to be like, yeah, uh, so he like didn't mean it. Like he he, he didn't know that they were innocent. Uh, yeah, yeah, trust us, bro. We, 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 we know scientists. I don't know. I've always just found it interesting how the hell they even like go about it. Like, do they go into this whole thing? Like knowing that they're going to lose, knowing that the guy that they're defending is just completely screwed in this situation. I don't know, it's, it's it's always interesting to see. But in his ruling on Thursday, so last week as of you guys watching this video, the judge ruled that Alba was neither insane nor suffering diminished mental capacity at the time of the crime. Inside the courtroom, whose public gallery was packed with the families of the victims, one person broke down in tears as the judge delivered his ruling. I mean, probably tears of happiness to know that this piece of shit human being 
is going to be put to death and rightfully so. A couple of videos ago, I talked about how at the time a miner committed a, a crime in Japan, uh, actually killed two people and set uh, a blaze. Very similar actually to this particular situation, except instead of 36 people, it was two people who at the time he was a miner, so he couldn't be put on a death sentence, who then ended up getting the death sentence just a couple of weeks ago because the laws on what age is considered a miner in Japan recently changed. Uh, if you like to know more information about that, it's up in the card. Link is also in the description, or you can just go to my YouTube channel to find it. You're not a baby, you know how to do it. But I think, you know, the fact that this kid who committed a quite a similar crime ended up getting the death sentence at a much younger age and with way less body count. Uh, was it anybody surprised that this guy was also going to get the death sentence? Personally, not really. I think everybody was hoping when this guy was finally put on trial that, yeah, this guy's just getting the chair. 100%, like there's there's no way around it. But you know, as I have experienced, uh, you know, covering all these kinds of news stories from Japan in the past, uh, the, the Japanese penitentiary system and the law system, you know, have been known to take some serious L's sometimes at really inappropriate times. Luckily, in this case, I'm happy to announce that Japan actually did take a W in this one and rightfully so. Oba entered court in a wheelchair pushed by a prison officer. The scars from the burns he sustained in the fire visible on his face and neck. Uh, he declined the opportunity to speak before he was sentenced. I mean, what can he possibly say? Like legit, what can he possibly say at this point? Five years has passed since he committed one of the most devastating and deadly crimes in decades. And he's gonna, what, 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 what is he gonna say? I'm sorry, didn't mean to do it. Um, I was a little bit insane. Yeah, like, you know, rightf rightfully so, shut the fuck up. Opinion polls show a majority of Japanese support capital punishment, while the European Union and human rights groups have called for its abolition. Condemned inmates typically spend years on death row and are informed of their executions just hours before it is carried out, which is pretty brutal, if you ask me. I mean, you know, some people will argue being like, oh, but you know, they're, they're going to the death sentence, what's it gonna matter? But you know, I, I, I guess I can understand in a sense why some people and some groups will be like kind of against that. Maybe let them know, you know, a little bit longer than a couple of hours before that they're going to die to just, you know, mentally prepare themselves for whatever it is. But again, I don't know, as I mentioned in that last video where I talked about the, the minor getting the death sentence, it is really a case by case situation. You know, some people, especially if they feel remorse, for instance, you know, you might give them the liberty to, you know, at least keep some of their human rights. And then there are some instances like this one, for instance, where like, no, you know what? You killed 36 innocent people because you were pissed off. You know, you, you killed a bunch of people and set the entire building on fire and you think you still have human rights? Get that shit out of here. So if you're hearing this story for the first time, you're probably wondering, well, Joey, why did this guy do this? Uh, like what, what possible grudge might have he had towards a very innocent Kyoto-based anime studio? Well, media have reported that Alba held a grudge against the studio, known for the series Violet Evergarden and other popular works, believing that it had plagiarized his novel, an allegation that KyoAni has denied. Several victims of the fire were found on a spiral stairwell leading to the roof of the KyoAni building, suggests they were overcome as they tried to escape. Survivors have spoken of their desperate struggle to flee. There was a person who jumped from the second floor, but we couldn't rush to help because the fire was so strong. It was like I was looking at hell. So yeah, as you can see, this man was batshit insane. Like when he said that he had plagiarized his novel, um, I don't really assume that it was a novel that was actually out towards, you know, in the public and stuff like that. Like this is probably just a novel that he wrote in his spare time, was probably saved on his like local computer hard drive. In his screwed up mind, he thought to himself, wow, this massive anime studio that is job is to kind of adapt shows and create shows as its thing has plagiarized my book. You know, the book that Kyoto Animation or literally no one else but me knows the existence of. And even if, let's let's say hypothetically, even if Kyoto Animation created a KyoAni original anime that maybe copied some ideas inadvertently from this book. You know, this book might have been like out there, you know, on bookshelves and was publicly available for anybody to purchase and read, right? Even if that was the case, it is no reason to kill 36 people and set a building on fire. I know that might be a hot take or whatever, but I don't know, man, the, the, the sane person in me thinks that that's a little bit crazy. There is a thing called 
the, the, the law and, you know, copyright infringement laws that are put in place to protect those kinds of things. But this man who at the time or is currently in his 40s, so probably at the time was like late 30s at the youngest, right? This grown ass man decided that, no, nope, the best course of action to deal with this is to kill all of them. If that doesn't sound like the most batshit insane person you've ever heard of, then I don't know what is, man. Alba suffered burns on 90% of his body and underwent 12 operations, including one to restore his speech. He did not regain consciousness until several weeks after the incident. At the first hearing in his trial last September, he told the court that he had not expected the fire to kill so many people. Now I think I went too far. Now, oh my god, this is pissing me the fuck off, boys. I, I, I'm actually reading this, you know, particular information for the first time. I knew about the whole, like, you know, plagiarism thing, but th the remorse he's trying to show, thinking that, oh, maybe if I set a building on fire, it's only going to kill, like, a couple of people. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this man, bro? Like, he's actually insane. Like, honestly, he's- now I get why his, like, defense lawyer was trying to, like, plea for the- the, the insanity act, because, yeah, he actually kind of does sound insane and- no, he doesn't kind of sound insane, he sounds absolutely fucking insane. Firefighters described the scene at the burning building as unprecedented, adding that rescuing people trapped inside was extremely difficult, and shout out to all of the firefighters out there who tried to minimize the damage as much as they could, they are literally the unsung heroes of our society. That's- that's basically- the, the situation, and I am happy to announce that after this absolutely fucking devastating situation that happened to Kyoto Animation, which, you know, thankfully, uh, due to a bunch of, you know, very generous people in Japan and, you know, crowdfunding uh, activities, they have kind of, like, picked themselves back up again and are making, you know, and, uh, you know, getting into the process of getting back to what they are good at. So I'm glad that, you know, it wasn't a complete loss for everything, but Jesus Christ, man, the, the fact that again, I'm, I'm just so happy. I'm, I'm so happy that this man is finally getting what he deserves. And, you know, whether you believe that the death sentence is the correct answer or just maybe life imprisonment is the correct answer, whatever the punishment may be, I'm just glad that even after all of this time, we finally managed to get a resolution to this story. And in my case, me personally, this is the happiest ending we could have got. This is this is the silver lining, I guess, in a, in a situation like this, that a man who committed such a horrible, horrible act is finally getting what he deserves. So yeah, let's hope we never hear from this fucker ever again. Uh, let's hope that innocent anime studios out there doing what they're good at, giving people great stuff. And yeah, please treat anime studios nicely. Honestly, tr please treat them nicely, especially innocent ones like Kyoto Animation. They shed blood, sweat, and tears to give us beautiful anime that we can love and discuss and join make communities around and just, you know, live life happily watching and experiencing. And I think those kinds of people deserve all the respect in the world. So my most sincere condolences to the people who were affected and good riddance and goodbye to the biggest piece of shit that Japan has birthed. Anyways, guys, that was my two cents on that. Just a little update for you guys and a closing again of the chapter of this story. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here. Subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger over here next to my head. There's a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one. Links to my social media as well as my Patreon to support me directly and Nonsense, my clothing line. Check it out. Sick clothes, right? You can get them by going to nonsense.jp and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.